Good morning. Good morning. This is Father Sean of the North Kerry Pastoral Area. It's the 14th Sunday, Year B. And I'd like to read just a section of today's Gospel from St. Mark. And it tells us that Jesus went to his hometown. He began teaching in the synagogue. Most of them were astonished when they heard him and they would not accept him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is only despised in his own country, among his own relations and in his own house. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning again. Not very much translates from one generation to the next, or indeed from one culture to another. Not very much translates at all. There are some exceptions. And one of those exceptions is the saying that Jesus used uh, in that we heard in today's gospel. A prophet is not accepted in his own country. We use that. We know what it means. And it's an image that's very well known. But it has a, a particular resonance for us Christians. And it, this is the source of that saying from today's gospel. Just a little background. Jesus grew up in his hometown of Nazareth. He grew up with Mary and Joseph, their extended family, the community, his cousins and his neighbours, all those brothers and sisters as they became known as uh, in, in that village or town in that neighbourhood. We also know, and we know this from the scriptures, that Mary and Joseph in their own way were steeped in, in their relationship with God, the Hebrew people. They were people of prayer, people who were just, they knew God in their hearts. And I presume that the extended family knew that too. And all the Hebrew people that they grew up with, that they well knew God. And here Jesus grew up. We believe that he, he stayed there, involved in whatever way, maybe with Joseph helping him with the carpentry. We just don't know. But we do know that he left home around 30 years of age. We know he went immediately to the desert for a long time and he sharpened his relationship with God there. It became just crystal clear to him what God wanted of him. He had an experience in the desert and he came out of the desert knowing what God wanted. And he didn't join uh, the temple or the temple priests. He didn't join that. He went and met with his cousin John who was offering a baptism of repentance, wanted people to change their hearts and make a commitment and walk into the river and be baptized to grow closer to God this way. And this is what Jesus did. And then he began to gather followers. He gathered people to himself, like minds, people who would grow closer to God. And they together, they went with, from village to village offering the power of God and the healing of God to the people that wanted to accept it. And then in that round of visitation, he arrived at Nazareth, his hometown, went into the temple and began to teach and explain the scriptures and offer healing. His neighbors, they just couldn't accept it. Sure, we know this man. He's the carpenter's son, surely. And, and, and they rejected the power of God in, in his life, this new sharpened power of God in him and the healing of God. They just couldn't experience it. So hearing this today, we are, we are Christians. Just one question that it lets me with, and I offer it to you. That question is, do I do the same? 
do I reject the power of God in, in the people closest to me, in the people that I know well? Because I'm sure I know them. I knew their fathers and mothers and grandparents and their brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts. Sure, how could God be active in, in, in their lives? You know, and I might do that from my own agenda. So the challenge for me listening to today's gospel is really to be open to the power of God in everybody, but particularly to those closest to me. So can I ask for the grace today, and it is a grace and a help that I need, to look anew and look afresh to those around me that I might, might see God's healing and God's power active in their hearts and in their lives. Can we take that half a minute, please, in our own? Just a half a minute. Asking for the grace that I might look anew at the people around me. Thank you. We take the half a minute now. Thank you. And we continue in prayer. We pray that the word of God may enter our hearts and bring us to a new awareness of each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that our hearts may be changed, that we may recognize our own greatest weakness we may surrender it to God and allow God to walk within us for God's greater glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are alienated from their families or their communities, that God will know, open new opportunities for them, new opportunities for conversation, for understanding and reconciliation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are struggling, that God will free those bound by addictions, give support to those facing their weaknesses and guiding them to start again. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for all who are sick, that God will bring healing to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we finally pray for all who have died. Our own family and our friends that are uppermost in our hearts. And we pray for those whose anniversaries occur here in Ballybunion at this time, for Violet and William O'Carroll, for Olive, John and Gerard Higginbotham, and the deceased members of the Higginbotham and O'Carroll families, for the Buckley family of Bale Sandhills, for Rick, Michael and Tess Harty, for Stevie Walsh, Michael McAllister, James, Paddy, Dennis and Bridie Morden, Tima Brown, Catherine Deanahan, for Breda, Tom, James and Patricia Honan and the deceased members of the Clark family, for Michael Collins, Tess Stack and for Nora and Joe Horgan. We pray that they will share in the life and love of God forever. Amen. And we sum up all these prayers using the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to stay our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you for praying with me. 
praying together and we do so again next week for the 15th Sunday in ordinary time. Thank you.